I've been using the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 as my primary smartphone since more or less a few hours after it was announced, and to be honest I found out some rather interesting things about it. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into what I think. So the entire front and back of the phone is covered in curved Gorilla Glass 5, which is a good thing in terms of protection, but what I did notice, especially on the show floor, was that it attracted a lot of fingerprints. Now whilst clearly that aspect of the phone isn't going to change over time, what I did notice which is interesting is that the effect is much less prominent if you use either the Orchid Grey or the Deep Sea Blue colours. One of my primary concerns when initially reading the spec sheet of the phone was that is a thick and that is a really heavy device. Finding out that it is noticeably larger than the already significant Galaxy S8 Plus was a little bit worrying. Having said that, after using it, I don't actually think it's too much of a problem. Yes, you'll notice it. Yes, it has a really quite significant heft to it, but actually, when you hold them side by side, you realise these phones are fundamentally different. Whereas the S8 is slightly more curved at the corners and has a pebble-esque feel to it, the Note 8 feels like a notebook. I noticed almost instantly after picking it up that the corners and the edges have actually been refined since the S8 and this does make it better to grip. Quite surprisingly, I'd say for anyone with medium to large hands, you shouldn't have too much of a problem holding the phone in one hand. Using it on the other hand is almost exclusively a two-handed experience, but I mean when you're buying a Note phone, you probably already knew what you were getting yourself into. So the battery on the phone was a huge, huge concern for me. At 3,300 mAh compared to 3,500 on the S8 Plus, for a phone which has a larger display, powerful components and also an S Pen to run, I was very worried. My primary observation was that the battery life on both of these phones was more or less identical, which sounds okay on the surface of it. But when you delve deeper, you realise it's a bit of a problem. Because the S8 Plus I'm using is a good 4 months old, its battery will have deteriorated a little bit since I bought it. And not only that, because it's filled with applications which are constantly using more battery life, the fact that it is lasting on par with an almost new Galaxy Note 8 doesn't give me too much confidence about the future. On a much brighter note though, the dual 12 megapixel camera on the back of this phone is doing fantastic so far. It's capturing loads of detail, loads of contrast, and in most cases, rather rich colours too. I've had absolutely no problems with shutter time, autofocus time, and all in all it's been a pretty hassle-free experience. Now of course, having those two cameras on the back leads to some other interesting options such as lossless zoom, and more impressively, this bokeh effect they call live focus. And when it works, it works fantastic. Edge detection is really good, the amount of blur you get is significant, and pretty much anywhere you look you're getting almost instant killer profile pictures. Having said that, it does come with an interesting caveat. The live focus mode only really works when you're standing a certain distance, specifically 1.2 meters away from your subject. It is a non-negotiable distance, and what it really implies is that even if you take a tiny step forward or backward from where you're standing, all of a sudden, instead of taking your nice bokehlicious shot, it just takes a normal photo. In terms of video, the Note 8 gets an almost instant seal of approval. It's got dual optical image stabilization, and that results in really clear, non-shaky footage that looks sharp as well due to the 4K resolution. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Note 8 as an almost direct replacement of the S8 Plus. And so coming from a phone without an S Pen, 99% of the time while using the Note 8, I never really felt like I needed it. Having said that, whilst I do think a lot of the features of the S Pen don't really add too much value, a few of them did stand out. Being able to simply slip the pen out and start taking notes whilst your screen is still off and saving battery, I think is a really good feature. Also, using the lasso tool, selecting objects within your photos, because you're actually using a physical pen to touch your screen as if it was paper, actually works more accurately than using a mouse and keyboard on a PC. Also, hover interactions are a game changer. Being able to hover over text and get a translation, being able to hover over images and actually be able to instantly interact with them in the way you want to, is super useful and genuinely time-saving. When the Galaxy Note 8 was announced, I was a little bit disappointed that they hadn't corrected the fingerprint scanner placement from the poor one on the Galaxy S8. And unfortunately, it's even harder to use on the Galaxy Note 8. Because of the phone's more sizeable dimensions, you have to do a lot more shuffling around the phone to reach it. And the iris and face scanners are exactly the same as the S8s, which is to say good in good lighting conditions and bad in bad lighting ones. Now even though the speaker was one of the few real downsides to an otherwise fantastic phone on the S8, it hasn't been improved on the Note 8. The speaker grille is actually smaller, the speaker itself is quieter, it does have more bass here but that isn't quite enough to compensate, and all in all it's not a great audio experience. Right on the other end of the spectrum, the screen is absolutely dazzling. As we've come to know and love from the Samsung Super AMOLED panels, very sharp, very colourful, and great to consume content on. 
And when it comes to the content, obviously it's a very powerful smartphone. We've got 6GB of RAM, Snapdragon 835 or Exynos 8095 depending on your region, and that means it absolutely blitzes games and benchmarks alike. It absolutely tears through the UI, and you can actually feel those extra 2GB of RAM compared to the S8. Now, from Samsung's earlier phones, TouchWiz has remained more or less the same which is to say it's got some useful features, but I don't really like the way it looks and feels, especially these new Galaxy S8 and Note 8 icons. So I switched over to Nova Launcher, and to be honest for me, that's been a bit of a better experience. So that is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Truly a fantastic phone in a lot of ways. It has great strengths like that awesome display, powerful internals and great, great camera that are really gonna make it right at the top of a lot of people's Christmas lists. Having said that, in an increasingly competitive smartphone market with a lot of other really high-end special phones coming up, it's tough to say if this is the one you should go for. It does have caveats like the speaker, like the battery, which prevent it from being perfect. But it is within arm's reach. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.